Hi everyone, it's Jay Sen with Maker Paradise, and right now I'm really excited to introduce Gareth to everybody, who is behind this really cool campaign on Kickstarter going on right now. Hey Jay, uh, yeah, and hi everyone. Uh, I'm excited to be here, and uh, yeah, we made Protocol because uh, pretty much my co-founder and I got fed up with seeing all of what uh, what other cartridge shaving companies were doing in terms of you know all the innovations nowadays are just marketing gimmicks to put you know rotating balls in your face or extra lube strips to lube up your face or just delivering that same stuff monthly in the mail and rationing your uh, your shaving to you one month at a time. So yeah, we uh, just launched our Kickstarter campaign for the Rockwell Model T. It's our second Kickstarter campaign, and hopefully, I can share some good information with you guys today. Awesome. And Gareth, you are out of Toronto, Canada, and you are the founder of Rockwell Razors. Right now you have something on crowdfunding on Kickstarter called the Model T. So yeah. really quickly, this is your second campaign. The first one raised about 120,000, I think, US dollars. And this one already has raised one hundred and twenty thousand yeah. dollars. And yeah. so congratulations. And I love the fact that you were successful and now you're on your second campaign, which is really like what we love to see. Um, tell me a little bit about Model T and Rockwell Razors. Why? What was sort of the inspiration behind creating it? Yeah, absolutely. So Rockwell Razors was somewhat born of uh, my co-founder and I seeing all the different options that guys had when we were, you know, uh, university students and, and didn't have a lot of money for shaving options. Uh, and we saw that all the, the innovations in shaving were coming out with, you know, rotating balls in your face or extra lube strips to lube up your face or coming out with six blade cartridges, which I think at their core, every guy knows you don't really need. So we looked into what an alternative could be that wouldn't need that sort of thing. So we came up with the double-edged safety razor, which looks like this, and uses uh, double-edged blades, which we sell for 10 cents each and give as good, as close a shave as cartridges. And we also made the razors adjustable, which means it's just a slight uh, difference in the angle that the blade cuts the hair just by spinning the dial on the Model T. And um, essentially that means that any guy can get a close, comfortable shave, no matter what his skin type or hair type. So. That was okay. kind of the idea. I, li I really like it. And, and I think that this is a solution that I've been actually looking for myself. Um, and so here's kind of like, I don't know if you can see it, but yep. um, I just, there are all these like little razors. I've actually got a whole bunch of them here. And nice. this is this is literally what I've been using. And this one here has like, I think it's like six, whatever you were just saying. Yeah. And That's this guy lot. doesn't really work. And, you know, this guy, it's, it's a mess. And so this guy has strips on it, you know, like loop yep. strips and stuff. And, you know, my beard's a little bit tough to shave. And so I, I feel like I'm a little bit, uh, what's the right word? I'm at the mercy of these cartridge companies. And they end up selling you these big, like, very wasteful yep. packages. A lot of times you get these packages and there's just one cartridge in there. It's like a huge package with all yep. this paper and you got one cartridge in there. Yep. So it's funny because you said earlier that you're, you were an environmental scientist or you had studied environmental yep. science. This is very wasteful. I mean, it is. This, is a, yeah. this is a mess. So yeah, um, that actually... That actually was a big part of the motivation behind uh, Rockwell Razors, and it was a big part of our pitch in the first campaign. And we make this is an 100 blade pack that we sell for ten dollars. So, um, and it's uh, everything in here is recyclable, and that was a big part of like our pitch the first time around that the razor blades were recyclable, and it didn't really resonate with people. People were more interested in like, oh my god, ten cent blades, that's amazing. But hopefully, eventually, the uh, the environmental aspect of it will come back around. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it, they're both. The most important thing for me, obviously, um, is that I don't cut myself shaving or that I actually feel clean and good after I shave and that my skin yeah. is like feels nice and all this kind of stuff, right? I mean, because when I, I've tried a lot of different blades and I've actually had challenges to find something that works um, for me. And then I guess your skin also adjusts to different kinds of shaving, right? So um, let's talk about crowdfunding, because I mean, I think this yep. will weave back and forth into the product. So you were in university and you did your first crowdfunding campaign and I saw your ship date was December, 2014. So when did you actually, or sometime in 2014, your first campaign? Um, yeah, December, 2014 estimated delivery, December, 2014 estimated delivery. So that was called the Rockwell 6S. So when did you start when did the campaign run? When what was the date range for your first campaign? We it ran from September to October 2014. 
And were you still in university or just graduated? Yep, full-time university right in the middle of midterms. You you heard about crowdfunding and I mean, how did you actually hear about it? I mean, you're in university, a lot of people, they would, yeah, how did you hear about crowdfunding? I definitely was just following the tech news and you kind of hear about one or two successful crowdfunding campaigns and we thought, well, this wasn't intended to actually be something that turned into a full-time business, but it was an area where we could gauge interest in our product before necessarily going into full production. So um, to me, that was the main motivator. I just understood that Kickstarter would be a good place to gauge interest because if you didn't reach, our first goal was $12,000. So we figured if we don't, we know that we can make the product if we reach $12,000. And if we don't reach $12,000, then there's no skin off anyone's back. So. Wow, and you ended up reaching 120, which is amazing. 